around the globe. <laughs> Probably mom and dad, hi. <laughs> you guys, welcome. This is our fourth storytelling sesh. Um, to um, really gather people, to share stories. really, really want to have this gathering live and in person be something that ignites our hearts to really connect, to care, to um, find a way to We'd love to talk and share stories and share stories for people who have money to donate. That is one of our goals for this event, is to donate money uh, so that we can provide clean, safe water to our sisters and brothers in Ukraine. And uh, I'm going to talk about that in a little, in a moment. But what, um, do you need some help? Okay. All right. Um, but what we, before I talk about that, what I asked, what I thought would be so fun, because here in our seeds of exchange world, those of you that have been around us for a while, you know we love stories. We, you know we love stories that really help us um, learn about the world and find ways to care for our sisters and brothers locally and globally. And so I asked my sister, Heidi Harnish, to talk. She may be trembling a little bit, and she just told me she would do this for no one else but me and us. So, this may be the only time she has a mic in her hands, although I don't think so. But I wanted, I wanted to be part of for many years, and he offered to host this event for us. So thank you, Heidi. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Peter. Um, and the thing I want to say is, what I love about this is, you know, Peter and Garrett, who are running a restaurant, which is not easy business right now in these COVID days, they're running a restaurant, and they're saying, how can we use what we have? Our restaurant, we have a space, we have food, we have a place to gather community. So for all of us, that's my invitation. How can you use what you have, what your gifts are, what comes naturally to you, and use it to make the world a brighter, more beautiful place. And that is what Heidi lives. And I'm gonna tell you what she sh is about to share is very personal and it takes a lot of courage and there's gonna be a, a tear or two because her family is Ukrainian. So she started off is going strong. to share um, why this matters and I'm just going to stand here and oh, be sister in law <laughs> um, So, will you talk a little bit? You have some notes, I know, and you told me the one right. thing you wanted to say, so I'll make sure you say that. Good, good. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Again, I apologize in advance because this is very emotional for me. <laughs> 11 years ago, my brother met the most amazing woman. Her name is Alexandra Skripchuk, and he fell in love, he married her, and fast forward, her parents finally make it out to visit, they're from the Ukraine. So, January of 2022, they come out to visit my brother and Sasha out outside of San Francisco, and war breaks out in Ukraine. So they're here. Um, which is fantastic. You look at the silver lining, and they're physically, they're okay, but her brother and sister-in-law both serve in the military in Ukraine. And at that point, her sister-in-law was about eight weeks pregnant, and they didn't want to tell her parents, or Sasha's parents, that she was pregnant, because you don't know what's going to happen. They had left. They don't know when they're going to be back. So about two weeks ago, they gave birth to a baby girl, which is fantastic. But they're not allowed to know where her brother is.
and bombs going off, and her parents just want to be there again, and they can't. And to me, that is the most heartbreaking thing in the world. They have a grandbaby, they can't be there to support their son, their daughter-in-law. None of it is possible right now. They have this dream of making it back in September, and we're all just, you know, we want that to be possible, but the reality is, is it probably is impossible. But what we can do is provide the people who are fighting every single day, giving everything that they can to make that September time possible for Sasha's parents a possibility. We need to get them the opportunity to actually serve. And water is the key to all of it. Providing people the opportunity to be okay, to be healthy, to be happy, happy is when all of it is up. Take a moment, close your eyes if you're comfortable with this. Take a couple deep breaths. And inhale love, peace, hope. And exhale anything that's burdening you. Imagine that exhale sending you some love to the people in Ukraine or anyone in your life that is in pain.
I'm going to ask my friend Fatima to come up and say a blessing, a prayer in Amharic, please. Um, Fatima has been here since 9.30 this morning <laughs> to help set up tables and take menus and... Have you guys met Heidi, Fatima? So Fatima, will you, will you say a prayer in, in Amharic for our sisters and brothers in Ukraine? Okay. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Uh,